Long Weaver. Hey everyone, my name is Chris. Welcome to Toman's Guitars and Basses. We are live, in case you haven't noticed yet, and uh, with we, I mean, not just myself, obviously. Um, it's my tally and me, no. It's uh, Lucas taking care of video, editing, everything related to everything that you see, and Temu taking care of audio. I need those two guys a lot today because Guillaume is not here. He is on vacation and having a good time probably lying on a beach and reading a book and, you know, all the stuff you... <sighs> you do sometimes and leave your friends alone at work. You know how it is. <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, all right, let's see who's around. Uh, I see K. Michael P. Howdy, guys, from uh, Sebastian, Florida. Bill and Chris. Yeah, well, uh, it's less Billy, more Chrissy this time. Uh, sorry for the disappointment, in case it is one. Um, getting into IRs, man, it's crazy, uh, says Joe Harvey. Uh, yeah, IRs, that's a good, that's a good subject. We should definitely talk about it uh, today. Uh, Louis says, hello, uh, Victor Stockman is here. Uh, there he is. Good afternoon, Chris. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, everybody, actually. Uh, I should re learn to read. Um, yeah. That's cool. Uh, let's start. Oh, and Eric, of course. Sorry, Eric, you're on top of the chat. I, I haven't seen your uh, first comment. Yes, um, great old school topic that most people do similarly, but most have their own little tweaks. Uh, yeah, that's uh, about microphones in front of guitar amps, um, which is a subject that, well, obviously one of the basics of um, being a guitar player, because as soon as you play a gig or record a demo, your first demo with your first band, you will face this problem that you need to record that guitar or you need to make it louder than what your amp is capable of doing. So uh, clearly you have in 2022 a lot of options. One of those is the old school way, the traditional way, which is still the number one. Even though IRs, impulse responses and modern technology is catching up real fast, I'm pretty sure within like five years most people will not use mics in front of cabs but I'm also not sure about it to be honest I also still prefer miking a cab if I have the option of running over 100 dB like right now I haven't checked the um, dB meter but I'm pretty sure it was over 100 um, let's talk about what kind of microphones can be used um, in front of a guitar cab and like what type they are dynamic, ribbon, condenser mic. These are the three main uh, microphone, well, types, really. And uh, where to put them. Because even though there are no real rules, you can put a microphone wherever you want. As long as you like the sound, it's going to be the right spot. Um, but there are like standards where these mic types usually sound great. Maybe even in most cases sound best. It depends on, as told, um, on your taste and on the music you're playing, the guitar you're playing, the amp, etc. Uh, let's get into all of that. And I have a couple of rounds in mind. I have actually three rounds. Third is going to be real fun. Uh, we'll get into it. I just want to take a look at the uh, chat because I've seen some movement on my periphery uh, on the left side. Um, Matthew is here. 
or we got a difficult guitar tech question, lol. <laughs> Go for it, Matthew. <laughs> if we're lucky, uh, Taemung, Lucas, or I will catch it. <laughs> um, Joe says, Joe Har Harvey says, I'm learning it uh, all plays a role. And no joke, like five, six days into using IRs. Uh, yeah, man, uh, that's my issue with IRs, that even though everyone assumes that it's like super easy, just grab something that does IRs, whether it's a pedal format something or like a multi-effect or a plugin or whatever, and just plug your, you know, your guitar signal into it and it's gonna sound awesome and it never sounded awesome to me like never <laughs> I've heard people like Pete Thorne is one of those guys who started using IRs real early and uh, my buddy uh, Rabia Massad real pioneers in that making IRs sound 100% legit and of course I mean and other people but these two guys are the first that came in my mind. Um, you can make IR sound amazing and uh, on my own YouTube channel I cannot crank my amp that much so I stopped using my cabin mics and I'm using also a, a simulation of a sort with IRs and I absolutely love the sound but to me using IRs always meant at least two weeks of just tweaking and hating what I'm hearing and after that two weeks it's like oh wow look at look at it that's that's really good but uh, I hate being there while the two weeks of hating and tweaking happens if you know what i mean and there's a learning curve to it and um, if you're used to actual really loud guitar combos or or cabinets and you want to get that experience that's so hard to emulate in any way without a really loud cabinet so yeah that's that's the uh the learning curve to um, an ir uh, technology and i love it i use it but i do prefer miking First of all, because you only need a mic and your normal guitar rig in case you have an amp because you're that kind of person who wants to play an amp and not just plugins or whatever. That's all you need in, uh, like on top of your normal rig, just a mic. And you can get like a, an SM57, a Shure SM57, which is like an absolute standard, industry standard mic, cost a hundred bucks. And then you have your, your recording or your live um, PA uh, sound covered and uh, you don't have to get you know different IRs and tweak them or whatever you just need that one mic and you need to know where to put it to make it work with your rig so enough of IRs uh, for now <laughs> um, yeah a, a bit of a, a plug-in talk an IR talk with everyone uh, sharing their opinion on what to use and which plugins and whatever yeah Guthrie Govan uh, has been uh, doubling now as well yes um, I've seen that Guthrie Govan uh, for the first time is on tour without amps he is using uh, his uh, I think XFX and um, and like uh, monitors around him behind and in front and whatever and um, he didn't do that because he prefers that tone um, I've seen that little segment of a, a video where he says that he wanted that uh, flexibility. He started uh, experimenting with soundscapes and crazy sound designs coming out of his guitar rig because of movie uh, soundtracks, etc. was he, what he was into during the pandemic. So now he wants to leave that door open, doesn't want to close that anymore and doesn't want to stick to a guitar rig, wants to have all kinds of sounds and uh, obviously a multi-effect gives you a lot of more options than a guitar, two pedals, and a guitar head. So, uh, yeah, but he's sounding awesome. I'm 100% sure because he always sounds awesome. All right, um, so many mics and positions, says Joe. Hey Amen, absolutely. Um, behind me, you can see four microphones. Those are our um, test rabbits, <laughs> uh, our hamsters today. Uh, it's gonna be two dynamic mics, a ribbon mic, and a condenser mic. The microphones are the SM57, sure, SM57, which is, as told, the standard mic when we're talking about guitar caps. Uh, the other one is its counterpart, which is uh, the Sennheiser E906, which is the flat one on the right side uh, with the huge white circle on it and the E uh, carved into it or like painted on it. Uh, that is similar to the 57 but has a way wider tone um it's 
it's a little softer and wider sounding doesn't have that crazy upper mid kick or like uh, nasalness that the 57 has a bit different character works on different types of um, guitar uh, rigs and sounds uh, then we have the ribbon mic which is the the long flat uh, black one that's the um, the uh, wait for it wait for it se electronics um, vr2 <laughs> which is the uh, voodoo ribbon mic and it's the it's the number two which is a bit longer and it's active so it means that you need to give it phantom power um, and the third the fourth one is the big uh, silver one that's uh, the mic of all mics <laughs> it's a neumann and it's the neumann the u67 which is um, a tube mic it's a condenser tube mic and it's it's over the top and it's absolutely magical um yeah these are just examples of their types obviously there are so many other really good dynamic mics uh the um our audio guy temu just mentioned oh we could use the audix uh what was it temu audix i5 or something like that yeah i5 exactly thank you uh which is again um a microphone dynamic mic that gets used a lot uh, if i'm not mistaken even in like heavy direction like metal stuff and and all that um kind of guitar sounds it really sounds great i think i've even seen ola england uh using the i5 um, pretty often etc and there are obviously budget versions of these microphones and like even more expensive versions of them these are just standards that we always use and we love and uh, we wanted to show you so i told we have three rounds uh cruelty free mics <laughs> no uh yeah um um yes sorry also short disclaimer on ribbon mics yes R ribbon mics usually do not phantom power the voodoo vr2 is like the absolute exception yes very true uh lucas just mentioned it's very important to know that in case you're using a ribbon mic do not have phantom power on for that uh track uh, for that channel because some will be destroyed immediately some will tolerate it but not very long and they'll start doing weird things so make sure that you're that you know what kind of situation you are in when you get a, a ribbon mic most of them are passive and do not want to get phantom power this is an exception as, as lucas told this mic is um yeah is one that needs phantom power i think it would work without but then you need a crazy good preamp but let's not go there this is one that's active and needs the 24 volts and most ribbon mics do not so yeah good good point there lucas the three things i wanted to do today are well three rounds let's put it this way first is having these mics all of them at the exact same placement to uh, to hear what's going on what kind of sound we can expect from them okay so we are going to be hearing the uh, sure uh, SM57 and the uh, Sennheiser 906, E906, which are the two dynamic mics. Then uh, the ribbon mic, which is going to be a very different experience because ribbon mics have a very warm tone and crazy extended low end and not that much sparkle on top. Again, every ribbon mic is different, but this is like sort of a generic explanation of what a, um, a ribbon mic sound experience is. And the fourth is going to be the condenser mic, which should have the widest frequency range and should cover every single hearable frequency frequency that's the way of pronouncing that word uh let me let me uh Temu, what do you think can we start with the two dynamic mics the way they are i will not move them yep definitely cool uh then the ribbon mic needs to get a little closer if that's gonna survive it what do you think um keep it where it is it became very low heavy if it was uh, closer yeah it's a ribbon yeah okay then keep uh, where it is but the uh, the condenser needs to come a little closer because it's definitely like 30 centimeters away from the uh the speaker and the others are like way in do you think it's it's fine to bring it a little closer mm, yeah it I might, I'm not I expecting might a great away. sound. I'm expecting to hear the differences, okay, okay. <laughs> just to make it clear. <laughs> it might be a bit louder or quieter. Yeah, please uh, adjust the uh, the uh, volume in case. Okay, I just uh, make sure that we are pointing at... Okay, it's not too bad. 
the ribbon is gonna sound warmer than the rest. Yeah, cool. And uh, let's see. The first is, I'll, I'll say which one you are hearing. Also, Temu has to activate and deactivate channels. So uh, let's start with the Shure SM57. I play something clean, just a few chords and notes, and then turn on a bit of a drive to get both uh, sounds, obviously. With cleans, I guess what we want to hear is a pleasant, nice and round tone. And uh, with overdrive, what's interesting is that as soon as you're overdriving a signal, you get crazy amount of um, harmonic content, which are the overtones of the notes you are playing, which means I hope we will hear something up there, <laughs> how open a mic is or how, uh, how mid-range heavy it is and sort of cuts the treble. We'll see. Um, I highly recommend using headphones or like proper speakers uh, when you're watching this or re-watching this in case you are. Uh, right, clean first. All right, let's hear the Sennheiser, the 906. Demo? Yep. All right, ribbon. And finally, the uh, Neumann, the U67 condenser mic. Okay. Did we hear anything? <laughs> Definitely. Okay, well, what is your impression? You, I cannot hear any differences. Obviously, I'm sitting in the room and I, all I hear is the guitar cap. So, uh, Temu, help me out. I don't want to give any opinions because it might color the, uh, people's opinions also. That's true, that's true. <laughs> but it's uh, more or less what you told also, that there's way more wooliness low end in the ribbon and then the condenser is way more open. Okay. And then there's certain different characteristics in the dynamics, but uh, the main difference between them that they are not as sensitive, so it's uh, they need a bit more push. Yeah, 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 yeah. How loud was I? Wait, let me test it with the dB meter. Okay, it's not not too not too loud. Uh, let's go through the mics again with an overdrive. I'm uh, expecting. I don't say anything. All right, let's start again with the um, SM57, which in case you're new to mics and do not know how these look like, uh, Lucas, can you swap to that cam? This long, strange, not very mic -y looking thing, <laughs> because it doesn't have a round uh, head, that's the Shure SM57. This flat one, even less normal mic -y looking thing is the Sennheiser 906. This one is the ribbon mic, the flat uh, ribbon mic, and this is the most mic looking thing, which <laughs> looks like every, I don't know, the studio mic, this is the Neumann U67. So now that we have that out of the way, let's check out some drive sounds with the 57 first, SM57. <laughs> Right. 
the Sennheiser 906. The uh, Voodoo Ribbon Mic. Neumann condenser mic, the big silver one. You let me know what you've heard. I'm looking forward to, uh, to, to seeing, reading what the differences are, if even anything <laughs> comes over uh, because of obvious uh, compression and, um, and conversion going on in, in the YouTube algorithm. Um, okay, there's some uh, pickup <laughs> talk happening. Can also, 3.3 kilograms. Someone what wants to win something <laughs> seriously you know what's weird yeah. <laughs> unfortunately tobias i see it tobias voked <laughs> that's that might be an issue because the guitar <laughs> does weigh exactly 3.3 kilograms <laughs> okay i think maybe just 3.2 not sure i cannot remember i i didn't weigh it for very long but uh not winning this one, sorry. <laughs> yeah, and some um, EMG talk, passive versus uh, active pickups. Um, <laughs> okay, Mike says, I think all sound good, so the cheapest will do. <laughs> Temu, <laughs> you, you just mentioned something like this, right? <laughs> that Absolutely correct. <laughs> if, they are, if they're in front of the same source, you really need high quality audio gear to to tell the differences especially because we are not mixing this and mastering this right so this is really rough the only thing that uh we have active is a very slight low cut uh, well not even cut just um, a few frequencies a few uh, decibels of the um the ribbon mic because otherwise you wait, would have wait, actually the is it uh, eq eq has been now uh, it's removed spiked. it's now off ah I, cool yeah Cool. So uh, Temu told that he might need to reduce the low end of the ribbon mic a little bit because otherwise it's it's terrible because you don't use ribbon mics this way alone. Normally you pair it with something else and then you use the ribbon mic for that rich, uh, warm, I don't know, low fre frequency range, um, not alone and especially not where it is right now. Uh, so that's... Uh, that's probably a good point. <laughs> if it all sounds good, go for those that, I don't know, that are robust and um, yeah, and are not the most expensive ones, I guess. Um, but again, that's, uh, that's very much dependent on how you're listening to a recording. This live stream or any recording, if you're usually listening uh, to stuff on your little uh, Bluetooth speaker or your cell phone even, or whatever it is, don't expect to hear a lot of those fine details, which is fine because, you know, if it's just in the background, you know, just listening to music in the background, it's, that's its function. But as soon as you put it on like a nice pair of speakers or good headphones, there things uh, appear all of a sudden. I remember the first time I've heard uh, Metallica, the Black album on a, a high-end stereo uh, stuff, whatever. 
I was, I had literally goosebumps, even though I've, I've listened to that album, I don't know, a million times since the 90s. Um, it's ridiculous how many little details and how, how much you hear the room, especially uh, in, the, in the drum track. It's ridiculous. And you never, ever get to hear that with like earbuds and uh, whatever, cell phone speakers and laptop speakers. Uh, yeah, cool. The, uh, the second round, uh, I want to get through that relatively fast because I think the third round is going to be the fun one. The second round is where I place these mics uh, to a, a spot in front of the speaker where you would, like most people would say, is going to be a safe position, like a, a good position for that microphone type. Okay, so this is the, the practical round, I guess. Uh, let me stand up for a sec, and uh, we'll start with the uh, 57 again. Uh, Lucas, can you uh, swap to the uh, deck cam? I already have. Oh, of course you did. Thank you. <laughs> and uh, here we have the 57. Um, not that center, because that might be pretty harsh, especially if you're using a guitar like I do with singer coils, which already have tons of high frequency information. So that center would be eh, yeah, a little too harsh. As soon as you go with the microphone to the side, like the more you go out, the warmer and sort of low and heavier the sound becomes that the microphone um, records or sort of amplifies or brings onto your mixing desk or whatever you're using. So um, you don't wanna go totally out of the, uh, the cone of the speaker or out of the way, but you might want to go for halfway between the center of the speaker and where the speaker ends. If you imagine here having this line, then you see the middle of that and that's exactly where the 57 is. So I will not move that. That's, that's perfect already. Uh, thanks Timo, by the way. <laughs> then the second mic is going to be the 906 where the exact same thing works perfectly. So these two mics can stay. The, um, the 906 is positioned the same way. It's right here, halfway between the center of the cone and the bottom of the speaker. So it's going to stay where it is. On this side though, we are going to be changing some stuff. First of all, a ribbon mic alone is super low and heavy. So if you only have a ribbon mic and don't want to use two mics, but you want that uh, nice and big low end, you might want to put the ribbon mic pretty close to the center of the speaker, which means in this case, I'm now I'm dead center. Um, I might just go one centimeter, which is, what is that? Half an inch uh, to, to the outside, but it's still pretty much in the middle. I'm not that close to the speaker um, for no good reason. Tamil, is that important? Most ribbon mics are pretty sensitive to volume. So, I guess it's just a safer thing to have like this much of a distance between the speaker. Like if we had the grill here covering the speakers, um, that would be around here. And then you have like about 10 centimeters. What is that? Three, four inches uh, away from the, um, from the front of the cab. Okay. Yeah, yeah exactly. The ribbon mic likes, at least to my ears in this context, it, it sounded much better when it has some air in between. Okay. Yeah. So the further away you get from the speaker itself, the wider the sound will be because it's not that much of a, a very precise little segment of that speaker or those frequencies that are the most um, noticeable in that segment of the speaker, you get more of a full picture of the whole tone. And then we arrive to the Neumann, which is a condenser mic, a studio mic. And uh, those, again, sound just more natural and nicer if they're not super close to the cabinet. So right here we have, what is that? Oh gosh, 35 centimeters, this much, <laughs> about. This is not very scientific, but <laughs> you anyhow have to test it and uh, try it out how it works best. But this is a good semi-close miking uh, distance, like yay far <laughs> from the cabinet itself. Uh, and you can put it pretty much wherever. You can put it dead center because it's far enough that the condenser mic will get a lot of frequencies anyhow. Doesn't really matter where it is, but if you wanna make sure that it's not too harsh and don't have to cut the high frequencies in, in post-production, you can move it a little bit uh, to the outside of that um, field where the, the speaker uh, sort of 
you know, sounds the uh, the harshest, like in the middle of the uh, of that range. Where's Julia? She isn't on as much anymore. Well, now that we're talking about guitar amplifying um, microphone, <laughs> um, yeah, Rich, uh, Julia's here and Julia's uh, on this channel every second Friday. Um, same, Lucas, as for the last two years, one and a half years? Mm, yeah. Pretty much. She's also currently on summer holiday. Yeah, Julia is enjoying her holiday. Which, uh, so she will be back in fall. Yes. And uh, Julia lives pretty far from here, so she's not always in this studio. Uh, she uh, will come, of course, every now and then, but she's also busy because she's a professional musician. And as they are, she is, bu she is busy and uh, she will do videos from at home in Austria or here or wherever. So uh, don't worry, Julia's our, our, you know, family. She's going to be back on every second Friday. Uh, anything else? Uh, question about the 906 also being directional like the SM57. Yes, I think so. Yeah, it has on one side, it's like flat. It's like a, like a palm. On one side, it says front. And on the other side, you see the huge E, like the logo you're seeing right now. You should see the logo and the amp and the speaker should see the uh, script front because that's the front. So it's a, uh, it's, um, uh, what's that? Uh, card, cardio weight, right? Temu? Exactly. Yes. It's cardio weight, which means that it's, it's not a figure of eight. It's not like it gets signal from both sides. It doesn't, it looks like it's doing that, but it's, it's not, it's, uh, it's getting the signal from one side where it also says front it's clever and it's reasonable it's a german brand they made it clear how to put it in front of an m and still people get it wrong uh, every now and then it happens but uh it's um it's a pretty easy mic to use because you don't need um uh, a stand necessarily you can just hang it above like from uh, the top of the uh the cabinet just with a cable and just let it tangle I hate it because it will move and then it will change the sound and whatever. But if you're lucky and you do not have a stand, you can get away with it, which is something we did at the NAMM show pretty often, actually. <laughs> Just grabbed the 906 with a cable, hung it over the cabinet and found a good position. And that's it. Literally five seconds of setting up a recording. I mean, that's, you know, that's pretty awesome. Enough talking. Uh, let's go through the four mics. Um, in the second round, which is going to be the same order. So uh, sure, SM57, um, and then we move on to the other mics. Again, as a short reminder, we are not having the mics at the same exact position anymore. We have them at places in front of the speaker where we love using them. Again, as uh, I think Eric uh, told in the chat, yeah, um, Everyone does it differently. Everyone has uh, their little tweaks and preferences and whatever. So this is what we do. It's not like a rule or something. You can put your river mic wherever you want. We kind of found it most balanced if it's pretty centered. And uh, yeah, let's start with the 57. Um, I'll play way shorter this time and some clean and some uh, overdriven sounds. <laughs> Okay, the uh, 906. Then the ribbon mic. Okay. The guitar is in tune, only my ears not. Mm -hmm. 
and the Neumann condenser mic. And now, before we talk about anything, let's do the overdriven round. Temu, it's going to be quick fire. Be prepared. <laughs> All right. We start with the shore. I, start, I stop playing, you can immediately switch, okay? Cool. Nice. And it's just going to be a few seconds. Are we ready? <laughs> okay, let me imagine what I'll play, which contains some single notes and some chords. Got it. So, SM57, then comes the Sennheiser 906, then comes the ribbon, and then the Neumann U67. <laughs> Looking forward to seeing what you guys heard. Biohazard says, great comparison. Thank you so much. SM58 seems brighter. Uh, yeah, let me check once more. 57. Chris. Yeah, that one. <laughs> Sorry, 57. Um, they, have, they are in the same spot. Like they're exactly as far from the center of the speaker, um, like the two dynamic mics, the Sennheiser 906 and the 57. And yes, the 57 has an upper mid-range that is very much in your face. <laughs> like that is the character of that microphone. And that's the reason why some people will love it and use it and pair it with a ribbon mic or with a condenser mic or with another um, dynamic mic. And some other people will absolutely hate it and avoid it for a lifetime. It's a, it's a very uh, strong charisma, really, like a character, but um, you've heard it right. That's definitely always what I hear uh, when, I'm, when I'm using the 57. And um, yeah, it's, it's a really great mic to pair it with, let's say, uh, Sennheiser 906 or the 421 for metal. That's something that people use a lot. Uh, Rick Beato, uh, well-known producer and YouTuber. Uh, he also uses the 57 with the MD421 uh, paired all the time. And in Nashville, that's the 57 plus a ribbon mic. That's the Nashville guitar recording method. Like most of those recordings uh, out of Nashville will be recorded with those two mics, a 57 and probably a Royer or something else like a, a ribbon mic. So um, yeah, it's... Uh, it's so interesting. All right, let's see. Uh, Mike says ribbon has much more low range. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, Temu, can you um, can you tell once more if we have the the slide low cut deactivated for the ribbon? Yeah, it's bypassed. It's bypassed. So everything is neutral, no EQing, nothing. Cool. Okay. Uh, yeah. Then I believe that you get a ton of low end with the uh, with the ribbon. That's very impressive in a way, but also scary because you need to take care of that and cut it at a certain frequency depending on your mix uh, or your live situation. If there's no other guitar player, no keyboard, there's a power trio and uh, you know, bass player, guitar player, drummer, definitely use that low end. It's so cool because you can fill up all the spaces that the bass player doesn't cover. If you have a, a busy mix, you will not need probably a ribbon mic anyhow because you will cut most of it around, I don't know, 80 hertz or 100 hertz or even 150 hertz. 
nothing under it is going to be any relevant to guitar sounds. But um, that airy, fluffy, bigness uh, ribbon gives is just magical. I love it. I love it for that. Uh, Should we hear it again? Yeah. With the low cut. Ah, okay, yeah, cool, cool. We could do it. Uh, Temu, let's start the ribbon mic without anything, like flat EQ, no processing, and then just engage that slight low cut, okay? We'll do. Noise. I just play a little something and you just go back and forth every few seconds, okay? Do you want distorted? Uh, is it more obvious? Um, chords would be best. Okay, clean chords. Cool. And when I say clean... <laughs> But you can also put some OD on. Yeah, a slight slider OD. Let's see what you guys are writing. I missed a little. Andreas Bravos. Hello, Chris. I'm late. No worries, man. I was working. Oh, uh, poor you. <laughs> I'll repeat you live when it's ready. <laughs> yeah, sure. Uh, you can also stick uh, to uh, the live stream and watch it and then rewatch the first half of it, <laughs> which is also the same amount of uh, joy or not, depending. Uh, what was it? Um, Myoglify, hey man, uh, says Chris was a 100% metal guy 13 years ago, looks like from his channel, haha, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, I, oh yes, absolutely, um, I was all about black metal, death metal, melodic death metal, and all the emperors, and opeths, and in flames, and children bottoms, and all those bands, for a long time, yeah, awesome, still love it. Uh, yeah, um, ribbon and SM57 together, please. Ooh, this, is actually, I was... this is actually good because there was one question before already, uh, like summing the mix, it, summing the uh, mics and yes. talking about the phasing effect after that. Yes. We can actually, yeah, let's put the 57 and ribbon yeah. at the same time. Uh, should I place them the same far from the speaker? Yes, please. Because, uh, yeah, this is the first thing. Uh, if you're using more than just one mic, you will most probably have phase issues, which means that the, uh, the waves are not in phase, the two signals, but out of phase. Oh, that's really hard. I'm managing. They, you know, the sound <laughs> arrives to the mic dif in different times and that creates phasing. It exactly. It will anyway create phasing because the, the frequency response is different in the mic so the exactly summing, summing signal will be different but yeah it there's will be interesting. O there's always some phasing like as soon as you have more than just one mic happening like active there is some phase cancellation happening but that's cool and that can sound really really good uh sometimes even uh really really bad <laughs> which is something we want to avoid uh let me put the ribbon mic closer wait the uh 57 has the uh membrane here, right? Where the Shure logo is. Right, Temu? It's not at the front. I'm pretty sure it's relatively uh, far to the back. Um, wait. Yeah, it's... I'm 99.9% .9 sure. So this should be pretty much in phase. Yeah, looks correct. So this is going to be the SM57 and the uh, SE electronic. Electronic? Electronics? One of those, the ribbon mic together.
I don't know. <laughs> all the sparkle and all the low ends in the world. Oh, yes, that's what I want to hear. <laughs> cool. Because you have to also remember that when you sum two signals, it, if, if they are well in phase, then the, it will be three decibels more or even six if it's perfectly in phase and everything goes well. Yes, and also something that I uh, recognized while mixing a lot of guitar stuff on my own for our Tomon videos or whatever, um, sometimes you can even amplify the mid-range, like kick the mid-range if those two mics are like really, really well in phase. That's probably the, the boost you're talking about, Timo, right? That it sounds more mid-rangey than one of the mics exactly. alone, yeah, yeah. which is, again, a little too much. So phase is a thing you need to be aware of. And uh, if you have one guitar amplifier where you have more mics, you definitely need to pay attention to that and test around with how close the mics are, like which is closer to the speaker, or how exactly they are, like how exact the distance is and that both mics are at the same distance from the speaker. You need to be like a millimeter does change already something. It's, um, it's, it's something I never enjoyed <laughs> because as soon as you don't finish recording that song or that track or that whatever album or video that day and someone moves ever so slightly one of the the mic stands you'll never get that sound anymore so tricky using more mics uh, than one uh, there are of course tricks and everything but uh, that's why i like to stick to one mic if it does the job okay uh let's do the third round before we run out of time the third round is going to be the fun round where we will uh, sort of blindfold that section of the screen <laughs> and I will, I will put maybe a mic to a different spot. I'm not sure yet, but I will use one mic and you'll have to guess what that mic is. <laughs> and uh, yeah. Should we do some more requests first? Uh, yeah, yeah, sure, sure, sure. There were more requests. Of oh, even more. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Off you go, blindfold. We don't need you. What are the requests? Any SGs uh, in the 906, room? 57 and Neumann as room. Ooh, okay. Uh, so we are talking about phase issues. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, uh, we could. Uh, they are in position, the two um, but dynamics. If it's the room mic, like, then the put the 67 like I Here? don't know, five meters away. Oh, like... No, no, not five, three meters. Let's okay, uh, three meters, that's going to be uh, right there. Okay, cool. I'm not sure if it's going to be in the shot, but it's going to be... Um, you'll hear it. Wait, wait. I just want to make sure that the cable is free. Don't drop the mic. Right in front of the cab. Where do you put uh, a room mic like this in a big room? Yeah, we'll put it. Uh, yeah, on, a little on offset. On 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 set. Okay, cool. Yeah, that's pretty good. All right, so that's gonna be the two dynamic mics, the SM57 and the Sennheiser 906. And Tim was coming in the room to check. No, Lucas. <laughs> to uh, probably turn a camera that you can see the mic. <laughs> yeah. Probably. We have it? Oh yeah. So that is the Neumann, which is right here. And that's gonna be our room mic. I'm pretty sure that Lucas is swapping to the other camera, which now has the mic in shot. Let me see, let me see. I think so. It's weird to have a few seconds of delay with the live stream. I am waiting for it. I am waiting for it. Thank you, YouTube. Cool. Yeah, this is the mic, which is about like three meters away uh, from the cabinet. This is the room mic now, and the two dynamics are the main source.
Since the Neumann is so sensitive, I'm pretty sure you've heard some of my yeah, we did. We picking. Did. Yeah, that's, that's the only issue with this. That's why we don't uh, use room mics here this far from the source, because even though the amp is really loud, we are way over 100 dB, I'm sure, um, these mics pick up everything, like literally everything. If anyone whispered in that corner, which is a mile away, <laughs> no, but it's a big room, the mic would record it. It's a good mic, it's a good mic. And um, you need to be aware of that. Uh, but I think that is an awesome solution if you are about to record like the best possible guitar sounds you can and you want for like your own album or demo. If you have a good room that's not too boomy, can have a really nice and long reverb, like room reverb, it's, that's awesome. That's where you really want uh, to use a room mic, but should be careful with like a, a, a really low end heavy room, which can ruin the whole mix and do weird things to the sound of even the closed mics. But if you have a, a nice and usable room that, where you enjoy playing guitar, a room mic, it's, that's the, the, you know, the cream on top of the cake or the cherry. Nice. Spanish. <laughs> I can read Spanish. I don't understand nothing, but it's great. Uh, but you can write English. I, I would love to be able to write a, a language that I don't understand. Sorry, my Spanish is so bad, I don't even try to, uh, to convince you that it's uh, worth trying to figure out what is going on. Um, Okay, there's a, I can see a thumbs up. So I guess play an Oasis song, are you sure? <laughs> um, and Valentine, sorry, <clears throat> Valentine P or Valentine P says uh, SM57 ribbon and Neumann in the same position? No, not at all. We had it in the same position. We had all these mics in the same position at the beginning of this live stream. You can rewatch it and then uh, you'll hear them as told. It's uh, like in the same position, same far from the speaker, etc. But this time we have them on places where we like using them, which is like, a, yeah, it's not a rule again, but a, a nice place to put this kind of microphone. Uh, let's, let's do this uh, last blindfold round um, to wrap up this live stream. Uh, and I, I was thinking about it. I think it's way funnier to have just three three rounds of playing, okay? Which are gonna be three different microphones, okay? Uh, I'll move back the Neumann to uh, like closer to the cabinet and uh, you will have to guess out of those three, which is which. One is gonna be the easy, <laughs> the, uh, the easy decision, probably. If you watch the live stream, you'll know which one will sound the most different. Um, and the others, you might be tricky. Okay, uh, can we cover this segment? Uh, Chris? Yes. Maybe just one playing with just the room mic in room mic position, so like just a few seconds. Uh, you, want, you want a room mic sound? Yeah, yeah. No, no, just put it there again and play so mm -hmm. the viewers can hear how it sounds if it's just the room mic sort of. Yeah, sure. So the same guitar sound. <laughs> I think I know this this mic now because we were using it for a couple of months now. It's so wide and natural sounding. <clears throat> I could imagine that what you're hearing right now is very close to what I am hearing right here or Guillaume when we're here, both of us. Uh, I think so. I will rewatch this segment for sure because I want to know how that sounded. <laughs> okay, uh, I'll move the mic back closer and do the three blindfolded rounds. Uh, where you will not see which mics are where exactly. Are we blindfolded already? I hope so. And uh, yes, Temu, our yes. secret language. I would like to have the following channels active in the following order. Are you ready? Yes. <laughs> okay, cool. Uh, 
First should be, oh wait, I need to remember. Uh, channel one. You know which? Yes. Then channel two. And then channel four. Oh, lottery. Mm -hmm. You remember? The order? One, two, four. One, two, four. Yeah. And you remember which, yeah, which mics those are. Cool. Yes. All righty. Uh, I will play a little uh, with a very slight drive to have some harmonic content, but not like a heavy distortion. Um, wait, let me figure out what I'm going to be playing. <laughs> That's fine. Okay, so channel one, two, and four, which is going to be three microphones, and you should guess which is which, which you are hearing. You can wait with your comment until the third microphone was um, active, and um, then give us your best, best guess. First. Then the second mic, channel two. And channel four, which is the third microphone. It's so weird. I cannot imagine if you guys can guess it. Why did we even do the blindfold thing? We didn't need it, Chris. And that's true. <laughs> but I wanted to keep you busy. <laughs> oh, <laughs> thank you. you. <laughs> no, I wanted to cover where the mics are because if someone knows a lot about mics and sees a ribbon mic at a certain spot, will think certain things. If you know. If, um, a, I don't know, condenser is super far from the amp or very close, sounds different, only for that reason. So, um, I like the third one the best. Buncha. Nice. Uh, but also, Biohazard says, first is the SM57, I believe. Uh, Praise and Primus. <laughs> yeah, I will not try to figure out, out of my <laughs> head, a Primus song in a live stream. <laughs> I might need some years of practicing to learn a, a riff. Uh, okay, Valentin P says, Neumann, Ribbon, SM57. Interesting. Myoglify says, one is Ribbon, second was the Condenser, third the SM57. Uh, Victor says, first Sennheiser, second Ribbon, third Neumann. It's so interesting. Timo, I feel you, man. <laughs> <laughs> Temu said before the live stream, like, it's going to be so hard to guess. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, it cannot be, it cannot be so hard to, to differentiate a condenser and a, a dynamic. Well, Temu was right. <laughs> Maybe that's the reason why he is the audio guy, <laughs> not me. I'm confused about having SM57 at one or three by Hazard. I, I feel you. Um, and also there's one more, Canarias, Libre, uh, Neumann. 57 and then ribbon you guys guessed the uh the microphones right it was the neumann the ribbon and the sm57 and the order wait let me let me see who got it right um 
Valentin, P. He said Neumann, Ribbon, and then the SM57. And that is the right order. That's how you've heard it. The first one was the uh, condenser mic, uh, which should have the widest sound, then the ribbon, which should have the warmest sound, and then the third one was the dynamic microphone, the SM57. Um, Timu, help me out. Did I remember the channels right? Absolutely, Absolutely correct. Cool, nice. At least there's no confusion on our side. Two notes equals no problems. Poo Ninja entered the building. <laughs> so cool, man. Yeah, you're right. You're right. Um, you get a, a two notes or like an aux box or whatever and get good IRs and you don't have to worry about mics. But as told, with both my Captor X, which I love, and with my aux box, which I also love, I had to spend many hours until I felt the same comfort confident and comfortable playing the guitar as when I'm just sitting here on this chair and just enjoying what's coming out from that speaker, uh, which is, uh, of course, you know, it's a very complicated um, subject because, because of all the layers that are involved. Uh, you can not expect a cabinet simulation plus a mic simulation to sound like a cabinet. It will not sound ever like a cabinet. It will sound like this cab mic'd and then in the control room with those near field monitors or with headphones. That's what an IR is. It's not your cabinet sound. And I was always waiting for IRs to give me that vibe that I have when I have a loud amp behind me, which is never going to happen. So yeah, that's, uh, that's a complicated uh, little thing, but IRs are cool. And yes, two notes for life. Awesome. Awesome brand as well, and uh, as told, the Oxbox as well, and, and all these. Um, okay, okay. Uh, Stephen Craig says, sure, SM57 and T-Bone RB100 with the Royer X-Mount dual mic clip. Yes, that is what so many people do. I mentioned this already in the live stream. This is the Nashville guitar sound, which means that one of the most like top-notch American guitar recording uh, city and just, you know, music city um, in Tennessee, uh, Nashville guys and studios will mostly use a 57 or another dynamic mic together with a ribbon. And uh, I mean, you've heard it in this live stream. It was, if it was enough in phase, and I think it was, that was probably the widest tone this, uh, this evening. It's, uh, it's a really cool mix, 57 and a, a ribbon. Um, Biohazard says, I was pretty sure about the 57 on first, but when I heard the third, and then he wrote, he's confused and not sure about it. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. The, the first one was the uh, condenser mic, and a condenser mic um, will give you a very similar vibe. It's just a question of how much more frequencies you get compared to like a 57, which is a relatively narrow sounding microphone compared to this Neumann, for example, the condenser mic. So um, yeah, a 57 is there for a good reason. It's, uh, I mean, come on, it's uh, on the market forever. And if it wasn't any good, people would not use it for so long now, but they still do. So it has its, uh, its strength. Uh, yeah, anything else? I don't see any uh, other questions right now. Uh, <laughs> Canarias Libra, friends, don't you think that the Harley Benton DC P90 Junior guitar in white is the most beautiful guitar of all? Well, it can be the second most beautiful guitar in the world. I, I, I am fine with agreeing on that, but um, I'm biased. Uh, by the way, the drive sounds, all of the drive sounds you've heard uh, were coming from a Harley Benton pedal. Uh, because I'm testing pedals right now for my dad. I, he asked me to buy him an overdrive. And this is this uh, new dual Harley Benton pedal, the uh, Good Cop, Bad Cop, uh, which has a lower gain bluesy side and a more drivey side. And um, I had one or both sides on of that pedal, which is pink, which made me think of Guillaume. <laughs> show it, show it, show oh, oh, it. Oh, okay, okay. But then I have to get on the floor again. And then I will play you out, or myself. Who do I play out if I play out? Ta-da! Are we in the shot? 
We are. Mm, mm, hello. Hi, I'm on overdrive pedal. So uh, this side is the, was the lower gain side. You've heard in the compressions, the mic compressions, uh, which is a, a sparkly, really like a pretty drive. And this is more of a, like a, a tubey kind of overdrive sound, not tube screamery at all. <laughs> uh, more of a, a drive, like a normal drive pedal, whatever. <laughs> it doesn't really remind me of any traditional uh, drive pedals, but it probably is related to something, but it just sounds great. And then if you stack them uh, where you can swap the order with this toggle, uh, this is how I had them both on for the most amount of gain, which is something I'll be using for the outro jam. And uh, I'm afraid this pedal is gonna stay right here until I have the invoice and paid for it because that's gonna be my dad's new pedal. Let's say goodbye. I really enjoyed this one and I hope uh, the sound examples uh, were clear enough um, to give you a, a good understanding of microphones. And uh, also I hope <clears throat> it helps you to avoid being overwhelmed by the number of microphones available and uh, you, you just really do not need to get crazy about it. If you have a decent mic and you play around with the position and you have a decent preamp or like an audio interface or a mixer, a power mixer for your uh, smaller gigs or whatever, if you mix yourself, you, you can make it sound really good. For example, if someone in your band has an SM58, which is the vocal mic version of this mic we've been using today, the SM58 is a really good guitar mic as well. I've seen that and used so many times and I've used it once because I didn't have anything else at that time and I was so surprised. I actually, for clean playing, I prefer that to the SM57 in front of a uh, cabinet. Uh, so uh, yeah, don't overthink miking, experiment and feel free to put them wherever. And uh, for the most part, I'm pretty sure you will get a really cool guitar sound for your demos and, uh, and your whatever, loud rehearsals or club gigs or whatever it is. All right, you guys take it easy. We're gonna be back in two weeks, I'm pretty sure. And that's gonna be a live stream with Guillaume. <laughs> And uh, that's uh, always funnier for me because he's the funny guy and I'm just, uh, you know, I just love playing guitar. You guys take it easy. Thank you so much for watching this. Uh, I'll play myself out. And I have to say a huge thank you to Lucas and Timo for helping me out and giving me tips and advices and uh, being there for me. Thank you, Timo and Lucas. I'm looking at two monitor veggies. <laughs> you guys are awesome. Thank you. You guys take it easy. Bye bye. See you in our next video. I think it's gonna be on Thursday. Yes, definitely. Bye bye.
I was still alive. 